Good afternoon, and welcome everyone to a special little find that I discovered deep in the bowels of my archive. This video is the absolute first origin of the Gamington Smythe name in the world of reviewing and analyzing and videography. This came from the 1930s and was my grandfather's show, Console Classics, and I wish to present it to you now in glorious high definition. Or you could say double high definition, because this was high definition back in the 1930s. So, I'm providing it to you twice highly defined. I shall waste no time and present this to you now. Enjoy! <laughs> understanding of examples of personal and social entertainment that will grace our future society in a feature I like to call console classics. With the use of a cleverly fashioned time machine out of a good old British teapot, we are able to go to the future and bring back examples that will grace our television sets from the 1970s onwards, so you too shall get to play these whilst orbiting on your very own space pod on the moon. These are colloquially known as video games. And to demonstrate this, we have an example of a video console in which to play them. The Sega Saturn. Whether this is actually from Saturn is not yet known. According to scribes on the outer casing of this contraption, it is produced by a company known as Sega, and developed in the far-off year of 1995 AD. It has three buttons on the top of the case, registering what seems to be the electrical input, the resetting of the device, and a method of opening the contents within. Once pressed, the lid magically opens to reveal a flat coaster-like object which reads Compact Disc. Now, you may think that this is for use on your gramophone, but no. This is intended for use inside this device. What follows is a short film about the Sega Saturn in great detail and describing the origins behind it. Those of a timid and nervous disposition should best look away now. And for those of you that might not be able to comprehend the futures I'm about to show you, your heads may explode in two. It is not yet proven, but it seems to be assumed so, judging from our latest scientific research. For those, you best look away now, as we now watch the film. It is the 1990s. Two powerful companies are in great competition for the affection of children everywhere. Sega and Nintendo. These Japanese organizations had been making consoles for years, and whilst Nintendo was going strong, Sega was beginning to fall back. After numerous attempts to revive their aging Genesis console with questionably risque accessories, Sega developed a brand new machine that would harness the power of compact discs for the first time. This would see off Nintendo, who's stuck with more traditional means to play games, known as cartridges. The compact disc was magically capable of storing vastly more information, and would prove to be the dominant force in years to come. And with that, Sega produced the Saturn, and released firstly in Japan in 1994. At first, sales were good, and it looked like that Sega had the upper hand. However, all of this would come crashing down with the American release the following year. From nowhere, another Japanese company, Sony, who had been cahoots with Nintendo to produce a console with similar specifications to the Saturn, threw their hat into their ring with their station of play. This took Sega aback, resulting in the Saturn being unveiled four months earlier. This action was meant to held off Sony and provide a stronger following, but instead, this proved fatal. It meant that manufacturers of video games had lost precious time in which to perfect their creations, causing great animosity towards it. Sony, meanwhile, had more time to modify their marketing strategy and learn from their Sega's mistakes, culminating in a reduction in price, more defined gaming experiences, and a more prolific and memorable advertising campaign. Alas, these contributing factors resulted in the Sega Saturn being pushed out of the market. Its own library of visual stimulation was lower in volume to the station of play. Inventors of games also commented on how complex the creation of games were on the device, not being able to embrace the amount of power the device could generate at a time. It meant that games that did come out were subpar in comparison to what they could have been. But show this to a 1930s audience and they would be most satisfied. I most especially. And with that, four years after its release in 1998, the Saturn was withdrawn from sale. Quite a tragic tale to a machine with immense potential. As you've seen from the film, the entertainment industry of the future is quite cutthroat. If you wish to sample this for yourself, your grandchildren, or perhaps your great-grandchildren, will be more than happy to regale you of tales for what they want for their Christmas stocking. Personally, for my Christmas stocking, I would rather much like prefer a brandy, or a spot of tea, or a slice of my mother's Christmas pudding. So, this concludes our foray into the future. If the person next to you's head is exploded out of sheer amazement, please be sure to use the cleaning apparatus provided by this theatre. So, until next time, as they say in the year 2010, catch you... Later.